And I think that's a very interesting question, given that um, I would have a few, and I think it's a few that's shared by many, that it was very unfortunate that the uh, finance minister took the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development Minister, Michelle O'Neill, to court at Christmas to prevent her from moving from fundings from Pillar 1 or from Pillar, pillar 1 into Pillar 2. And I think in the context of going for growth, the executive uh, need to look at the opportunities, the massive opportunities that that, um, that, that strategy has, uh, has presented. But on cap reform, there's a debate, obviously, some of you may be aware of here in the conversation, particularly among farmers. And as a party, we went out and had a consultation during the, uh, during the two stages of Pillar 1 and Pillar 2. And I met with hundreds of farmers, and particularly from myself coming from the city. Um, it was quite a learning curve to, uh, to understand the issues around cap reform. But I'm up for it, and I've certainly got my head around them. And at those meetings, it was very, very clear that the support for small farmers, for small farming businesses, like yourself, the Federation of Small Business, that you would think small, then for us in Sinn Féin, we would be looking at, at small farmers, and they want a single region model. They don't want the North divided and repartitioned again, so that those in the severely disadvantaged areas would receive less funding than those in the advantaged areas. And they also want the flat rate payment introduced sooner rather than later. And that was the message that I heard in Ballymena, in Cranny, and across the north as I have engaged with farmers. And they are very offended at this notion that they are not productive farmers. I've been to farms where the, where the, the cattle is uh, born and raised and finished, small farms that are doing very, very uh, productive work. I think in relation to whether we're getting enough around the growing for growth, one of the delegations that I hosted in Europe was AFPI delegation. And I took them out so that they could have an understanding about the opportunities in Horizon 2020, particularly around research and development. And I have been since, uh, since then engaging with them so that they tap into the very thing that has been mentioned here. Because let's be very clear, and I think it's something that we would all collectively agree with, that in the North we're asleep when it comes to European funding opportunities. And that was one of the reasons that myself and others, but I have recently produced a funding document to try to give groups and organizations, FME, SMEs and SMEs and others, access to that information so that they know that they are informed about the funding streams that are there. And we need to waken up to those opportunities and we need to get smarter, we need to get better at drawing them down. So we haven't actually secured what we should be securing. I think that is through no fault of our own. But what I do believe is that people need the information, they need to know how to navigate their way into Europe, and as an MEP, that's what I have been doing, and that's what I committed to do, to bring into Europe to you, and you to Europe, and I have been working over the last 18 months to make sure that I bring that information onto the table to those who need it. Thank you, Martina.